Your puppy nips because they want to play. Your puppy also nips because they interpret movement as play. That is especially why your small children are going to be the subject of your puppy's nips because they're moving around very excitedly all the time. So why do puppies go after things that move quickly? Well, guess what? It's not just puppies. It's all predator species because there's something called prey drive in predator species that when they see quick movement, they're gonna go after it and chase it. So how do you solve it? You have to control your kids. I usually see a lot of people come into my dog training business with nippy, bitey puppies on kids when the parents can't control either their dog or their kids. And really, the simplistic answer is set rules and boundaries, follow through with those rules and boundaries. Because if there's no follow through, you're not going to get any behavior that you're trying to expect. So <laughs> if you don't follow through, don't expect any behavior. Another reason why your dog is probably excited, overhyped, needs a lot of play and attention is because you're not giving your dog enough exercise. Do you know the history of your dog? Like the breed lineage? Do you know what kind of job they're supposed to do? Do you know if they had a job at all? Do you know what kind of space they were bred in? Did they have a lot of room to roam and now they're enclosed to a small apartment? If you have a hunting dog breed, you need to be running them at least twice a day. If you have a herding breed or a working dog breed and you're feeding them out of a food bowl and you're not teaching them skills through training, <laughs> you're ended, <laughs> it's done. Like you need to have a lot of structure. You need to be training them for their kibble and every single day, at least twice a day for their meals, or if you're not training them, you need to get them onto a Kong plan or a way that they can learn to play with their food. So Kongs are a great option. There's also a million other different food type toys where your dog could be actively working for it. And if you do have a breed that is a working dog or herds or is a hunting type dog, there is no excuse. They absolutely have to positively be working for their food at least for 30 minutes per meal, okay? Because that's going to be mentally exhausting for them. Your dog also might be nipping and being crazy because they're not getting enough sleep. Adult dogs need at least 12 to 14 hours of sleep per day, whereas puppies oftentimes need a lot more. I know when I don't get enough sleep, I get a little bit frantic, crazy, and just kind of, I, I do, I get like these energy spurts. And <laughs> it's the same for our dogs. If they're not getting that required 12 to 14 minimum hours of sleep every night and day, then there's something wrong and you need to fix that ASAP. It also depends where you get your dog from. If your dog was removed early from their litter, even from surgery, earlier than eight weeks old, and, or maybe they were part of a very small litter and they didn't have a lot of brothers or sisters to play around with and test out to make sure they know not to put too much bite pressure, then your dog needs a lot of serious help because when they miss out on that socialization opportunity early on in life, you need to teach them at an older age how to do lighter bite pressure. That takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. So you have to be really careful about who you get your dog from and how they're socialized early on. Now, if your dog is still pretty young, take them to puppy playtime and manage them during puppy playtime. Don't let them get too rough, redirect them, use your treats, and give them a good minute to pause, breathe, and calm down before resuming play if they do get too overexcited and too amped up. But socialization is really important to help teach them that bite inhibition. Otherwise, they learn to bite down just a little bit too hard. So to recap, puppies nip to initiate play. If that is unacceptable to you, teach them to do something else. Teach them what you would like for them to do instead. For Winnie, my foster dog, I taught her to bring me toys. And if she wanted to do something, she would let me know by bringing me a toy. Number two, control the prey drive with your children. 
Kids are oftentimes very difficult to control, but if you do not follow some sort of plan and you do not initiate the consequences of that plan when inevitably someone is not going to follow it, then you are never going to have a dog that learns how to interact appropriately with people. Number three is exercise according to your dog's needs based on their breed as well. Of course, not all dogs from a specific breed are always going to be high energy. If your dog is not, congratulations, you hit the jackpot. However, provide exercise based on your expectations of your dog's breed. Also, just because a dog says they're potentially low energy doesn't mean they will be. So base it off of what you see in your dog and what your dog needs by its individuality. Number four is all meals should be worked for either by a food toy such as a Kong or by you training them for each and every one of their meals, at least up until they're a year of age. This is because young dogs get into trouble and they're still learning what the world means around them. So you should be able to make every opportunity a training and a learning opportunity for your dog. Number five is give your puppy or your dog sleep. Adult dogs need a minimum of 12 to 14 hours of sleep and puppies often need more than 12 hours of sleep. Of course, this depends on the individuality of your dog and your dog's breed. And number six, early socialization. This is very important depending where you get your dog from. Obviously puppies from puppy mills tend to have a little bit of a problem with not only bite inhibition, but potty training, separation anxiety, and other things. So whenever possible, get your dog from somewhere that has been well socialized and exposed to a lot of things early on in life. Of course, if you already have a puppy and they weren't able to do all those lovely early socialization opportunities, get them out to socialize and make sure it's very structured and that they are able to stay calm after getting excited. If you are looking for a detailed guide about how to get over all of this puppy nipping, exactly what you're supposed to be doing step by step, go ahead and visit my website at caitlinsanimals.com and I have a very detailed blog. I want to make sure I covered every little thing and give you guys the help that you need. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.